Hello everyone, I'm Koi Wire. This is CNN 10. Happy Friday, Fry Yay. Before we head into this weekend, let's fuel our minds one more time with 10 minutes of news and a little bit of fun too. We first head to China where U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is meeting with Chinese officials to discuss a wide range of topics. One of the main things on the agenda Blinken is warning China, do not help Russia ramp up weapons production as Russia continues to wage its war against Ukraine, which is a U.S. ally. But that's not all the two sides are talking about. Secretary Blinken is also discussing how China treats U.S. businesses operating in that country. And China has its own grievances. It argues that America is trying to suppress the Asian superpower's growth. China and America are kind of like frenemies. They are the two largest economies in the world, each with massive militaries, but China is not a democracy like the U.S. It's run by an authoritarian leader, Xi Jinping, so the two sides' interests don't always align. Still, cooperation is vital to maintain global prosperity and peace. That's a key point that Secretary Blinken made when he spoke to a group of NYU students in Shanghai. This relationship between China and the United States is one of the most consequential, one of the most complicated uh, in the world. But where the balance really comes in. Uh, we can make sure that we are um, talking to each other, hearing each other, understanding each other. It really comes through the connection between students, business community, citizens across the board. Now, this meeting comes at a tricky time for the U.S. and China. America just authorized a foreign aid package that includes $8 billion to combat China's growing influence in Asia. President Biden also signing a potential TikTok ban into law. It requires the social media company based out of China to find a new owner in the next few months or users in the U.S. will no longer be able to download it. Next, we head to Kenya, where more than 30 people have died after heavy rainfall led to a series of flash floods that swept almost half of the country. In total, more than 100,000 people have been affected by the severe weather. CNN's Larry Madowo shows us the devastating impact in Nairobi, Kenya's capital. Where I'm standing, it used to be somebody's house. All this area used to be people's homes, all swept away. What's getting cleared back there, that debris that's left over, that's what used to be their homes. In these informal settlements around Nairobi, the houses are made of wood, they're made of iron sheets. They're very easily swept away when there's flooding, like what was experienced. It's a cycle. If it's not the flooding, it's a fire. And then flooding and a fire. And it goes on and on and on. You see a lot of people trying to collect whatever little is left, what their homes used to be, some iron sheets, maybe some valuables, trying to figure out how to rebuild their lives after a devastating situation where every single thing they owned was swept away by these flash floods. Nothing has come from the government. We only help ourselves because nobody has come to the rescue. You feel like you don't come from this country, you are maybe inferior, because if it was some, somewhere else, maybe middle class or the highest class, government could have responded as up. Residents in these areas, informal settlements or slums as they're better known, often complain about emergency services not getting to them during disasters. But here's the extra complication. It's starting to rain one more time. The Kenya Meteorological Department has warned of heavy to very heavy rainfall still to be expected. And the fear here is that that might lead to a new wave of flooding. Larry Medowo, CNN, Nairobi. All right, next we take you to Dunsboro, Australia, where wildlife officials saved 130 pilot whales after a pod beached themselves. Sadly, rescuers couldn't save all of them. At least 28 whales died. Rescuers rushed to hold the animals upright to keep their blowholes clear before getting them back in the water. Experts say the animals can only stay on land for about six hours before their health diminishes. 10 second trivia, which of these foods items is not included as part of the national school lunch program? Chocolate milk, bean burrito, potato chips, or cheese pizza? If you said potato chips, you are correct. This is a tricky one. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, potato chips do not contribute to any of their approved meal patterns. Mmm, lunchtime, what's your favorite school lunch? I was definitely a pizza day guy or grilled cheese day or turkey day. 
There's not much I didn't like. Anyway, the U.S. government wants to make school meals healthier. The Department of Agriculture just announced new rules limiting the amount of sugar and sodium in breakfasts and lunch that are served to nearly 30 million students K-12. through The changes will be implemented in phases over the next few years. By the 2027-2028 school year, added sugars can't make up more than 10% of the total weekly calories for breakfasts and lunches. The same school year, sodium needs to be cut by 15% in lunches, 10% in breakfasts. It's the first change to school meal standards in 14 years. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10 has a tentaclizing twist. Nine-year-old Cal Clifford wanted a pet, a pet octopus, and he thought he got one, but he ended up with a whole lot more. CNN's Jeannie Mose has more. You may not think of octopuses as lovable, but this is the face of a kid seeing his pet octopus for the first time. Nine-year-old Cal Clifford cried with joy. You didn't have to do this. When his parents gave him the tank, we're going to build an octopus tank? The octopus itself was delivered in a plastic bag to this Oklahoma family. They named it Terrence. Terrence loves to welcome us every time we visit her. Hi! As in high five, but with eight tentacles. Within weeks, Cal's dad Cameron says... We found out that he was a she. And Terrence, now Terry, started acting weird, laying eggs. But no one imagined they'd been fertilized. The uh uh-oh moment was definitely when the first one hatched. Hatched right in Dad's hand as he examined an egg. Cal got emotional. (laughs) Getting a first look at the hatchlings, suddenly one octopus had become many. Fifty. Fifty babies, and each had to be cared for in a separate container. The babies will actually cannibalize each other. The babies got names like J.C. and his boo, Siance. The family learned that octopuses make for expensive pets. Leaks in the tank system required vacuuming carpets and relaying ruined floors. It was all documented on TikTok. I wish my son's favorite animal had been a hamster. Almost half of the baby octopuses survived, but Terry has died, buried in the yard. Usually the mom dies after laying her eggs. The babies are destined for educational institutions. As for Cal, he's so into octopuses he even dressed up like one for Halloween. No wonder he was overwhelmed when they gave him his first tank. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Dad and Mom. Genie Mouse. CNN, New York. Safe to say that family will be pretty octopied for a while. If you're looking for an octopus, you know who to call. Our shout out today goes to Detroit Innovation Academy in Detroit, Michigan. Thanks for spending part of your day with us. And Jim Hill Middle School in North Dakota. What's up, Mr. Fultz? We see you, Mystics. Let's cue that music. Rise up, everyone. Remember, you have the power to be the boost that someone needs this weekend. You are more powerful than you know. I'm Koi Wire. This is CNN 10. It's been a blessing to spend this week with you.